Um, an obvious contrast in style of play. If you look at Georgia, I was just looking at some numbers. Um, they haven't given up more than 73 points in a game all year long, and we have only scored under 73 twice, I think. So um, they do it a couple of different ways. It's They're very disruptive defensively. They try to steal it from you. They're going to be high pressure, heavy scout. They're going to be jumping in passing lanes, a lot of pro switches. Um, and then the other product, I think, of their, um, their scoring is – if they don't have a fast break, if they can't score on you in immediate transition, they'll really take some time off the clock. So some of that's pace, some of it's defensive style of play, but uh, you got a team that's really built around defense, um, big, strong, powerful, and then us. That's not either of those things, but fast and quick and agile and can hopefully spread you out. So a, a really cool contrast in style. It's a, it's a team that we've played well against all three years. But I think we've only beaten them once, and that was last year and the last time we played. So hopefully we got some formulas figured out, but uh, it's always a good game when we play Georgia. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, you talk about the contrast, but you go from scoring 100 points to a team who rallies behind their defense. How do you keep your girls emotionally from feeling let down that they're not scoring as much as they did you know, a few nights ago? Well, hopefully that's already been done in making sure they understand just the value of every single possession. And we start out at the beginning of the year giving them a stat called points per play. And it's a stat we care about. There's a lot of stats on those stat sheets that come out that we don't even look at and never talk about. But that's one we talk about an awful lot. You, you only get so many plays per game. So how do you do every time you get a chance to get a play? And I think we're number one or two in the country in that. Points per play. So when you stress that from the first day they show up on campus – they tend to not really even notice the pace of the game. Um, I think they can handle that part. I just worry that the only thing about a, a game like that is the advantage that we gain by playing fast, that compounding effect it has on teams in the third and the fourth quarter, you don't get that against Georgia if they're able to control the tempo. So I worry a little bit more about that than if they're caught up in looking at the scoreboard and only seeing a six or a seven up there. We really don't care what that number is, but we do care what it is per every time we touch it. That way they value it. They understand that uh, we're only going to get the ball so many times we got to do the most with it every chance we get. How is that different than points per possession? Is that well, somewhat similar? A little bit, but everybody counts possessions differently. Like, is it start when an offensive rebound? Is that a new possession? Is that So I don't get caught up in that. I mean, from the time we get the ball until the time the other team gets the ball. And the, the offensive and defensive rebounds that kicked a lot of bounds, that, that sometimes affects the per possession stuff. There's probably not a lot of it. It's probably just a term. But the way, we, the way I chart it, the way we have charted it over the years is we've got it until you get it back from us, we still got it. Like that Wisconsin game when we got, I think, eight points in one play. You know, that's to me, that's probably why our points per play is pretty high because we got some eight possession, <laughs> eight point plays. But – um, I, I think that, too, is one of the reasons we don't turn it over as much. The kids value the third possession of the game just like they do the 33rd or the 53rd or the 73rd. Every one of them's got the same value, and that way we don't – sometimes, hopefully, we don't have to feel pressure at the end of a game because they're all worth the same amount. That first play of the game could be the game winner. You just don't – it's not going to make Sports Center. It's not going to be the one we talk about. Um, but that play's just as valuable as the free throw at the beginning of the game talked about her, but Erin Barnum and just how much she's come on and how yeah. helpful she's been, especially, you know, with Kelsey or with Kira being yep. out with, a, with an injury. Well, she did it to us all year in practice last year, so I'm glad she's doing it to other people. Um, dynamic, uh, you know, the feel for the game, the be a gamer, all of those things. She, we knew she had it, but you don't get a chance to see that in practice every day. But when those lights come on, she just has a knack of getting it in the goal. It's a little bit unorthodox at times around the rim, but she's long defensively. She really affects a lot of passes and shots. Um, I'd say she's probably our second best overall rebounder. She gets tough rebounds. She gets athletic rebounds. She can handle it a little bit. Um, and it's a maturity thing. You know, I think last year was good for her, um, you know, uh, getting used to school, getting used to meetings and, and all the things that it entails. And I think it re has really helped her knowing that she doesn't have to – uh, she can just do whatever the team needs her to do that night. And she's 
accepted a lot of different little roles. Uh, Kiara will be back for the game. She practiced yesterday, so we're back to having those three kids in that rotation. But, you know, all three of them do something a little bit differently. But, um, you know, the thing that we haven't seen, she's done it a couple times, but Erin can really shoot the three. And if that becomes something she's comfortable of doing, and now we've got five kids on the floor that can all shoot it, um, and we're hopeful that will happen before the end of this season and not into her junior or sophomore and junior and senior years, but um, the sky's the limit for this kid. She's got a lot of uh, areas to work on and grow, and that's what's really exciting about her. She's got, a good, she's got a good approach about it, too. She's been a great teammate. Um, she's been willing to do whatever we've asked her to do. What do you need to do to, to make the most of your what's what would be to your advantage in this game against Georgia? Well, the tempo for sure. We can't let that go their direction. Um, and then there's there's going to be certain rebounds in this game that we've talked about before. We just simply can't get. Um, Jenna Stady can get up to balls that we're never going to get to. Um, so we've got to get all those ones that are down around you know her her chest, her waist, her and on the floor. And we've been getting progressively better at that. So I think we've got to turn those the times that they do miss into transition opportunities for us. Um, you know, their high-low worries me and us. She's a good passer. She's a big kid that can shoot the three. So they'll bring her out away from the basket and then post maybe try to post Chelsea up with Stephanie Paul or one of their other undersized post kids. And they've had some success doing that. So whenever you're worried about Chelsea getting posted up, you're worried about foul trouble. You know, you're worried about foul trouble when it comes to those things. So we'll have some, um, you know, Coach Todd worked on the defensive implementation yesterday, and it looked really good. Um, fortunately, in our league, we get a lot of chance to work against big kids. Um, we had to face a kid like that at, at Vanderbilt. And she hurt us in the first half, but we made some good adjustments, and she didn't affect us as much in the second half. That's part of that compounding effect of pace. If, if we look up and it's been a low possession game in the first half, then she's not going to be tired. we got to make sure she's tired at the end of the first quarter and at halftime. So foul trouble, I guess, is my answer to what you answered, you asked. Uh, we, we could get in foul trouble. Their guards are athletic. They're hard to keep in front of you. We could be susceptible to reaching fouls. Um, you know, knocking on wood, we, foul trouble has not been that big of an issue for us because our developed depth. You know, we can play row at two positions, three positions now. You've got Kiara, Aaron coming in for Taylor, um, and then, of course, IT and Max splitting times out there. So there's, there's plenty of fouls to go around uh, if they're just not extremely untimely. Well, you mentioned Rokia. I mean, is she doing okay? Yeah. I mean, really, really nice game Sunday. I mean, yeah. kind of showed what she can do. First double-double, I think, of her career, and um, she's always been a good rebounder. But, you know, we're, she's knocked down three for three at the three-point line, which is something she can add. Um, but she practiced day one. She didn't miss any practice time whatsoever. She rolled her ankle late in that game. Uh, it swelled up a little bit on the plane home, but, um, you know, Natalie got her fixed up. She's practiced ever since, so we shouldn't have uh, any uh, time away for her. You talked about schedule in your first four games in the SEC and how they were tough. How important is this middle part of your schedule for your team? This is that middle part we talked about where we've got the, these two home games uh, against Florida and Georgia, teams that are similar to us in records, predictions, uh, RPI, whatever you want to talk, whatever you want to look at. So um, when you're racing to get to eight wins and beyond, uh, every one of them, although worth just the single win, some of them carry more importance. And these are two of them. So um, there was that four games and then a five-game stretch, and we're 2-0 and in that five-game stretch to start. So taking care of home and – you know, not having to travel and use those things that they are having to do to our advantage. Um, when we look at seeding time, I think you can go back to this week and probably draw a parallel to where we end up seeded. I think that's a fair thing to look at, especially when you look at where we currently set with them. You know, a couple of wins by us could really separate us away from these two particular teams. We won't play Georgia again. We will play Florida again. But, um, you know, when you're going head to head, you get that separation plus the tiebreaker. So, um, important, no bigger than any other, but certainly an important time for us to, to be at home and hopefully have a great crowd. You know, I've, I watched our men's, you know, game. We didn't get to be here for it. We were on the road. And then I saw that gymnastics set a record crowd. So, I'm hopeful we'll get it. I hope the weather holds off, either whether that's Thursday or Sunday, that we get one of these games when everybody can show up 
I was looking through the record book. What I was looking for, Mario, was to see uh, our, our group of seniors have never played in front of a top 35 crowd in Razorback history. Um, and so I'll break it down to 25. You know, we've been ranked in the top 25 all year long, but none of these kids have ever played in front of a top 25 crowd. I think it takes about 6,600 to get there. So uh, we've got a ways to go, but if they will do for women's basketball what they've been doing for gymnastics, for men's basketball, we know our fans will come out, whether that's Thursday or Sunday. But important for us to take advantage of it in a lot of different ways, not only in standings, but, you know, continuing to be a viable option for our fans to come out and see. You talk about, you know, this middle tier and, and these teams. Mm -hmm. Is that comparative to, say, last year when we looked at the end and we looked back and uh, a loss to Auburn here, you know, arguably could, you could say kept you out of the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I don't think there's any question it did. I think it's what everybody pointed toward towards us. So, yeah, it could be. It could be that same type of deal. Hopefully it goes in our favor this time. But, yeah, it's um, – you know, what we don't have, you know, last year when we had that Auburn game, one of the things that was so daunting was we weren't sure we could win a game in February. When you looked at who we played and where we played them, we knew February was going to be tough. That was why that one was so pivotal. I, I look at our schedule this year, and there's not those eight or nine, potential eight or nine game losing streaks. Um, so it changes it a little bit, but I don't think I don't think it changes the magnification of the impact that it could have. But yeah, I'd mark it down and see where we're at going into the SEC tournament and say, well, let's see what the, what we did do against Georgia, Florida, at Alabama, at Missouri. You know that little four game counted with the one we just won at Vanderbilt. Those five games, um, you know, I think you look at what the record was in those five. It'll go a long way to determining what we're seated in uh, Greenville.